I just had one thought come to me as Phil was ministering here this morning, and um, I was thinking about the little chorus that we sing. Uh, lift us up into the greatness of God, and lift us up into the heavenlies above. It says, out of what? The narrowness of self. That's what God's calling us out of, because that's, that's what we're born into in this world. That's, that's human nature. It serves self. It's about self. What pleases me? What can I gain? How can I enjoy things? That's what people seek after. That's what we're born into. But God has provided a way to lift us up out of the narrowness of that. Because, you know, it's so narrow. I just I, I, Every time I think about it, I think about Solomon's testimony. About when he looked back at all the time he had spent indulging every kind of pleasure he could think of that the world offered. And to look back on it and realize that is all vanity. And it's just like what was mentioned about Moses there in Hebrews 11. That there is a, there is a pleasure of sin, but it's only for a season. And, and you come to find out that, that that thing, it doesn't last. And then you need more or something different. And then that doesn't last. And then everything you need to go acquire, it costs something to get it. And, and you just get caught in this cycle. And then you look back at the end and say, that was all completely worthless. The pleasure that I experience in a moment, it's not here now. Where did it go? It's like money that you blow on something that you blow money. What, what did that money do? It doesn't do you anything in the long run. There's, and, then, and that's what we're born into. But God has provided a way to lift us out of the narrowness of living for self. And it's into something. Into thy heights and thy depths. Lift us up into the greatness of God. That's the thing, you know. When we talk about being called out, you're not talking about, oh, you know, like what's been said here, to, a, to some miserable life. We're being called to freedom. Yes. We're being called to freedom from a nature that can't ever be satisfied and all it knows is I need more now I need something different now I'm bored with that now I need more and I need more and and, and I'm struggling to acquire it James even talks about that you know you're tempted when you're drawn away with your from your own desires that are in this nature and you're frustrated because you can't satisfy them and so you end up with fighting other people because they're trying to satisfy their nature too and and th that's what life is apart from Jesus Christ you got a world full of people trying to serve self that is such a narrow way. And then to get to the end of that, like Solomon did, I mean, I, I believe his heart was right with the Lord. I believe there was something genuine there, but he sure wasted a whole lot of his life and his potential that God had provided him with. And he looked back on that and said, man, what a waste. All of it was vanity. It was pointless. And not only that, it was vexation. <laughs> it actually, what I thought was going to bring me pleasure, actually brought me into bondage. It was miserable. And that's the thing where he's calling us out to lift us up into the, his heights and his depths. You know, he, he's not talking about here removing everything from you until you're just left with a little stump and, okay, that's, what you, that's, that's your life now. He's talking about what the Bible talks about when he talks about pruning. You know, he talks about that, that every branch that brings forth fruit, my father purges it, that it'll bring forth more fruit. What, you know, what pruning does, yeah, you are cutting something off. You're getting rid of something. But the point is so that something else will grow in its place, not so it stays cut off for the rest of its life. You cut it off so that something better can grow, something that actually will bear fruit, something that will be productive and beautiful. And you're replacing it with something better. And that's what he's doing. He's calling us out of that narrow life into his heights and his depths to give us something that is so much better to live for. I just pray he'll give every one of us, like we said, that vision because that takes a revelation. It takes a personal revelation that that's the truth because we're not born into that. We're born into this natural world with these natural senses and our inclination being to serve this nature. And it's going to take a revelation of God to the heart that there is something better to live for, that that is, that that is pointless, that that is worthless. It's like what happened to Paul when he could look back and say, everything I used to live for is a big pile of garbage. Now I see what's worth living for. And that's what I'm going to live for no matter what it takes. That takes a revelation. And I just pray that he will give us that revelation. And not just as a, as a one-time thing, but a fresh continued revelation, a reminder of that, because it's easy to get our eyes off of him and onto the things of this world as we go through things. I mean, we, we do. Like Phil said, the culture affects us. We, we live in this world, we get affected by it. But I just pray he'll continue to remind us that he has called us out to something so much better. I want to be delivered from that narrowness of self into his immeasurable heights and depths. God lift us up into the greatness of God.